as I said, I'm going back to Hamburg. This was after the war was over and we lived almost normal. There were a lot of people that came from the eastern part of Germany that were going to go and uh, find a new life in our area and throughout. And uh, they came down with their wagons, horse-drawn wagons, with all their belongings and trying to look for a shelter. Mostly farmers gave them some shelter in their stalls, in their barns, and also in their houses. It was really a great gesture on the farmer's part and on all the people that wanted to take care of the ones that are now no longer had a home. And the reason for them coming to our area is because they tried to get away, get away from the Russian occupation that has taken place throughout what it's called, or what was called, West Eastern Germany. And, uh, of course, they also had to find work, because if they had no income, how are they going to live? And uh, it was the times were very difficult. In 1949, we had a very cold winter, and it was difficult to survive at that, under those conditions. We uh, gave away our bedroom and living room and all kinds of furniture in, in exchange for flour, potatoes, and all kinds of uh, foods that were available. It was very hard at that time. We never had anything good to eat. It was mostly um, cabbage, just cooked in water, no protein in it. Our bellies were swelling up and uh, it was just a bad time. But uh, going right along in about uh, six months, we had suddenly, everything was available because America was sending us all kinds of goodies and it was really terrific to have that support that was, certainly was needed. And we also at that time had the uh, Berliner Luftbrücke, which is uh, the air supply of uh, foods that came in from Western Germany to Eastern Germany, and especially to Tempelhof, which is the airport in Berlin. That's where things are distributed. And it was, un it was then under a plan which is called the Marshall Plan that made all of this available. We had, uh, now we also had schools again because our Teachers all came back, and we had to double up in certain classes, but uh, it wasn't manageable, and uh, things weren't too bad anymore. In the meantime, we also had had some food that was good food, and I, I remember that for the first time in my life. I ate a banana. I never saw or heard about a banana. And it tasted terrific. I still like them today. And uh, the great thing was that we haven't had no longer uh, bombs falling all around us and trying to kill us because the war was now completely over. And uh, <clears throat> the English sector was the area around Hamburg. Then we had the French sector and also the uh, American sector, which are sector means that there's a like a small part of we were cutting up Germany because we were afraid that they might go and 
do some more war playing and uh, they didn't want to take any chances. And so we were for a while governed by by uh, the English. And it was okay, there was no, no problem. I remember that uh, in a winter time when our river, which is called the Bille, B-I-L-L-E, was our river that f flowed next to our little street, which is like a small highway, next to our, well, next to our highway, which is, uh, like I said, called the Billy. And what we did in the wintertime, we went, we went to school, put on our old ice skates that we still had, and put the ice skates on and started going down the, down the river, but on top of the ice. It was really fun. Every now and then we, we had somebody breaking into the ice and got all wet and had to go back home because he couldn't make it in the winter time because uh, our classrooms were not really heated well. The only thing that we had was an old coal stove in one corner of the room, which is our classroom, and that's where we had, had our school. And uh, it was okay, but it was not good, good enough to dry up your wet clothes. I was now about uh, 15 years old, and when you are of that age and you want to learn a trade, that is when uh, you no longer have to go to grade school, but you have to go to a, um, I can't think of the word now, which was like an advanced school for where you learn, where you work as an apprentice. You had to work. Uh, physically to work five days a week and one one day a week you had to go have to go to a classroom and that was for three years and uh, that's how we learned our trade and actually what it was called was trade school and of course I became a painter pa painter hanker and sign painter and all that good stuff and uh, I uh, really enjoyed it. I liked I liked it all my life because it was a nice something nice to learn, and it was very exciting to develop things that uh, we were never developed of. I I remember that uh, my master painter, which was a the company. His name was. Uh, hmm, I have to come back with that later. I, don't, I forgot the name. My master's name was Carl Gunther, or Gunther as they say here in, in the English. He was a very good man, even when. Uh, I didn't have any clothes because I grew out of what I had before. And whenever he had something that he was not very tall, he was about a little bit taller than I am, but um, he would give me things that, of course, were very much too large, but I could at least wear that and go back and forth to to work and to school. And uh, I know that clothing you couldn't really buy either, but they had in like a uh, like a Walmart type person where you, uh, place where you could go and uh, and buy very cheaply. You could buy some things that uh, almost would fit you. I know when I got con when I got confirmed. I had a suit on it was much too large, but I had couldn't get any shoes. So what I had to wear on shoes were women's shoes, 
but times were bad and you didn't care. People laughed at you and you laughed with them. And uh, it was all right. Well, in the meantime, I think I recorded beforehand that I met this little young lady. Her name was Ingrid. And she was a very pretty girl. And uh, we got to know each other. We uh, spent a, l a lot of time together. And, uh, and before you knew it, we were engaged. And after our engagement, we had the idea, well, I had the idea, to go and uh, try to find a way somehow to America because the way things were in Germany yet, they were not too good because of all the remnants from the war that was left behind. You could find all kinds of rubble and you could find guns, you could find ammunition. And of course we found all these things, my buddies and I, we uh, we played with them and took them, took the ammunition apart and uh, did all kinds of stuff. I don't even want to talk about that, but it was uh, as being kids, crazy kids. But anyhow, let's get back to Ingrid. Ingrid and uh, and I, after a year and a half engagement, we got married, and. Uh, Another year and a half after that, we had a little baby daughter by the name of Regina. And uh, it was just the uh, greatest thing that I could think of that could happen to somebody. When you have a little child, like a little baby, and suddenly you become a family. And it's really wonderful. And I always loved children. And we did play with her. We acted like little kids. We tried to make her develop her into something that she wasn't yet. But uh, we had fun. We had lots of fun. In the meantime, we had a glee club that was uh, an old glee club that came to back together since the war time was over with and uh, they had like maybe 16 people, men, singing and I was recruited and I sang with them too, so did some of my buddies and it was really nice and uh, but when the time came we finally got no notice from Uncle Willie here in America that he would uh, sponsor for us because in those days you couldn't just come in and settle. You had to go and find somebody that would sponsor you in case that there's something going on in your life or whatever. They could go and send you back to Germany, which of course they didn't have to do because things were okay with us and uh, we moved in with Uncle Willie in Philadelphia and uh, well I want to go back to our trip from Germany we came on this big old ship it was a Greek liner and it was called the New York and uh, we had a storm, it was in September, September 27th is when we came into this country. But the storm prior to that, those days was very severe and very hard. And uh, I would say about 80% of all the people went to stay in bed because they were sick because of uh, of uh, seasickness. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, we are back online. <coughs> I like to talk about my years in Hamburg, Bilverda, where we have uh, spent a long, long time playing, getting educated in our trades, and uh, Anyhow, here it goes. We lived in a, in a real nice villa in Hamburg, Bilverde. It was it's called Villa Rat. And we were on the second floor, my family and I. And uh, we really enjoyed the view. We could see down on the street and we could see all, a little bit further on to the uh, Bille. The Bille is a uh, little creek or it's a little river, maybe the size of the Egg Harbor River. And uh, it was just nice. All our friends lived close together. We did not have transportation like a, like a car or a motorcycle. All we had was our feet and bicycles. I remember that when we uh, got our jobs to, 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 to go and uh, to go to work, we used to swing on the bicycles and heading for Hamburg, which that's where all the work was. And it was maybe a half hour, sometimes an hour, of a bicycle to get to to get to our jobs. I started as an apprentice in a paint shop. We had maybe twenty or twenty-five people working, plus four apprentices. So we, they could, we came in, and we were in different age groups. I was the the youngest, of course, and I had to do all the running and and uh, everybody was my boss, basically. And uh, the apprenticeship took uh, three years. We got hardly any money at all because we were learning and didn't know anything. And uh, we... Uh, but the four years, the three years, when when passed quickly, we had to go and every year have a uh, test that we needed to take, and uh, it uh, it was nice to f to see your own progress that you had to do because the test was mostly phys in in in. in and, and taking uh, written tests and also practical tests. And after three years, we uh, had to go for a week and do several different tests in our trade. And uh, now we could go out and make some money because uh, we were paid now 80% of what our wages were for the mechanics that, you know, were established mechanics. It was uh, not a lot, but we figured out that we could quit since we graduated. Now we could quit and find a job with a different contractor and make more money, and that's what we did. And... Uh, so, that was that. The, uh, the days of the bombing and the war was over and we had really 
finally reached a phase in our life where you don't have to be scared of being killed every day because that's really how it was. The bombs used to fly around us coming down and uh, there wasn't much you can do because the uh, German army and forces actually there were not enough soldiers around to you know take care of us so it was nice not to worry about it now that we uh, have that behind us we've started a, a different social life which was going to dances on a Saturday night we used to go sometimes we had our own dances at a local place and uh, we had a great time doing that and we sometimes went to neighboring villages and of course we had a little bit to drink and we thought we were really big time guys and uh, what it developed was that eventually after having a few more drinks that we tried to start a fight with the neighboring boys and uh, it always it always ended in, uh, okay, we'll do it next time. And during, during the time of uh, us going out with other young people, you know, we had, uh, we had to look for girls that we might like, and we did. And of course, my girl was Ingrid, Ingrid Grauman, and Ingrid Grauman was a girl that lived right across the street from us and I never paid much attention to her and she never paid much attention to me and what we actually did we uh, went out dancing a few times and uh, she was the way the way we uh, transported ourselves we took a bicycle and that uh, crossbar that came from the saddle to the uh, to the to the front that's where our girls were sitting on and we were pedaling to the next place to have some fun and of course Ingrid and I we didn't you know we were just friends for a little while but of course that didn't last too long because uh, we also got romantically involved and uh, she was a very pretty girl, well she still is, and uh, it was really fun to go out with her. I remember one time when uh, my friend Walter Mark and I had a little, little bit to drink and we were coming down the street singing and uh, we knew exactly where Ingrid was at that time sleeping in bed because uh, we went to that particular window where we knew she was and we sang to her and of course the neighbors didn't care for it too much because our singing was not that great but uh, things continued to develop with Ingrid and I and uh, In 1954-55, we got uh, engaged to be married. And of course, uh, it didn't took, take very long, like a year and a half, and then our first daughter, Regina, was born. She was the cutest, the cutest little thing. We, uh, we lived with Ingrid's mother for a while, but the place was too small, and we decided we have to find something else, and we did. We went to another relative in Bilverda, Tantemata, 
and uh, we uh, we lived there until we decided to come to America. Now, now, uh, of course, all of our friends and relatives were telling us not to go. America is not a good place, and blah blah blah. It uh, it turned out different than, than they predicted because we uh, had a we had we had a wonderful time so far, and I'm almost 80 years old now. So we really liked it here because we stayed here for for all this time. I'm going to stop now for a few minutes and then go back. I'm back. We also, during, during our younger years, we uh, belonged to a table tennis club. We belonged to a gym club, and I also, which I liked very much, was I belonged belong to the Glee Club. The Glee Club, Glee club consists of about like 20-some uh, men, and they all were really good singers, and we had a, we had a great time. In the meantime, I think I mentioned it once before, um, we took up corresponding with Uncle Willie and Grace here in America. And uh, because Uncle Willie's wife, Mimi, she was not doing well physically. She was, uh, we think she had Alzheimer, we're not quite sure. But uh, that was a real problem and Uncle Willie needed somebody here to take care of his wife and his daughter, Grace. And uh, after going back and forth with letters, we uh, decided it is time for us to make up our minds and go. So we, we secured all the papers that, that were necessary for us to, to get entry into the United States. And uh, it worked out. We are still here, and uh, we uh, we lived with Uncle Willie for about two years, and then we were able to scratch every penny together that we had to get our own house, and we bought a house on Distant Street in Philadelphia. And uh, we didn't have any furniture in there. We uh, we just made do with what we had because we did not want to have any debts on our heads. So we uh, furnished as we could see fit. We had enough to, in the kitchen to have a kitchen set, to have a uh, bedroom set and a smaller room where we could have uh, our little girl, Regina. And uh, after, after living there like that for about, uh, I think it was nine years, we decided we could afford to get a bigger, better place in New Jersey. And uh, this is what's gonna happen. We moved, and this is our, was our final move because we have not moved again. We are still living in the house in New Jersey at Indian Branch Park, and uh, it's the, I never in my wildest dreams 
figured that I could ever afford something like this. It's a beautiful place and uh, we are very happy here. Our children, they have uh, great jobs. Regina, our, our eldest, she, uh, she has a, a, a job as a director in, in a medical clinic. Jennifer is married to a, an attorney and Libby's husband is, is married to Mark who is a uh, real estate developer. So I'm going to stop again. <laughs>